What's going on guys, this is Junior here. Spring Boot 3 came out and there's been a lot of changes in Spring Boot 3 from 2.7 to 3. And I know I have a course that I dropped recently where I show you how to configure Spring Security and Spring Boot. So I just wanna make a quick video so I can show you how to upgrade from 2.7 to 3 and what that configuration would look like. And if you go over to Spring Initializer here, you can see that by default now it's 3.00 that is selected because that's gonna be the version going forward. At least for the time being. So let's go back to our application and then I'm gonna upgrade to 3.0 and then we're gonna see what breaks and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix everything. So this is not gonna be a super long video. I just wanted to show you how to upgrade your Spring Security configuration because in our application, that's gonna be the biggest thing that's gonna have to be changed. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So let's go back to our application that we built. And if you don't know what application this is, then I'll leave a link in the description so you can go ahead and check it out and find out how we build this application. But I'm just gonna show you how to upgrade Upgrade the security configuration that we have whenever we have Spring Boot 3. So the first thing we have to do, we have to go to the PUM file, of course, and you can see here I was on 2.7.4. So we're going to change this to 3.0. So 3. Point, oh, there it is. So once we do this and then we recompile, so you can click on this icon here or you can right click and then go to Maven and then reload project. That should do the same thing. So you can see here it happened really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and close this pump file. Now we're going to go inside of the application and mainly we want to go to the security folder and oops, we want to go to the web security configuration. So every other security configuration will be the same. So for example, this authentication provider will be the same. We won't have to make any changes here. Security configuration for the password encoder is going to be the same. So we don't have to do anything here, but you can already see that we're getting errors in the web security configuration. And that's what I'm going to show you how to fix right now. So let's go in here. So we're going to start at the top. The first thing is we have to actually use the uh, configuration annotation. So I'm going to go in here and do configuration. OK, so make sure you have that. The second thing, as you can see here for the enable global method security, you can see we're getting an error or there's like a strike through it. And the reason is because this has a different name now. I mean, it's a completely different annotation, but the name is similar, just different. You just have to remove the global. So you can see when I remove the global, then it stops complaining. And also the prepost enable is the default. As you can see here, it's a little bit grayed out because it's redundant. So we're just going to go ahead and remove it because that's the default anyway. So that's what we have to do here. And then scrolling down, you can see we're getting an error here for the authorized request. And that's because we have to change this to authorize HTTP requests. And you can see it down here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. So authorize HTTP requests, that's going to be the new name. And also instead of int matchers, that's going to be request matchers. OK, so we're going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and copy it and then paste it down here as well. OK, so instead of ant matches, it's request matches. Just more specific names, I guess, and whatever optimization that they did in, in 3.0. And then the last thing I want to show you is we're not going to be doing this anymore to pass in the authorization provider. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and then delete these two lines. And then I'm going to go down after the end. And in here, I'm going to scroll up a little so I can have this in the middle of the screen and I'm gonna go down here. So what we're gonna be doing is just passing it directly. So we can see authentication provider and then passing the authentication provider. So it's a lot more clean as opposed to the way that we were doing it earlier. So this is all the changes that you're gonna have to do in this specific application when you upgrade to Spring Boot 3. Obviously this is one simple implementation of Spring Security. There's gonna be like many different ways and many different scenarios. And I will show you how we're gonna do this in Spring Boot 3 as we have more courses coming out. So that's all the changes you have to do and make sure you clean your import. Other things we have to change is uh, if we go inside of our models, you're going to see that all of these are going to break as well. And that's because we have a different package now for these uh, persistence. So all the Java X's, uh, as you can see here, Java X that whatever, those are going to break. So we have to change this to, I think, Jakarta, uh, Jakarta. Okay. And if you change that, then it's going to work because that's the new package, uh, the new package name. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of these. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a way that we can select all of them and do it with quickly. I just don't know the shortcut for it in IntelliJ. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it manually. So all the Java X, we have to change them to Jakarta. Okay. So we're going to do the same in here, Jakarta. Okay. And I think that's everything we have to change. This application wasn't really big, so there's not a whole lot uh, that we'll have to change, but at this point we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and just run the application and see if there's anything else that is broken that we'll need to fix, but let's just make sure. 
All right, I think we got everything. So everything should be working as expected. Everything should be working exactly the way they were working before. This app is small, so there is not really a lot of changes. Obviously, if you have a bigger application, then it's gonna take you way more time and a lot of more things are probably gonna break and you'll have to fix all of these. So I hope that was useful to you. And again, I'll leave a link in the description for when we build this project, if you didn't see it already. And I have updated the code, so all the code should be updated in the repository as well with the updated security configuration as you can see that I just showed you and that's all you'll have to do really so if you have any question let me know just reach out to me email me or drop a comment or something or on social media Facebook Instagram or on discord and let me know and then I should be able to help you if you're not able to fix your application okay so I'll see you guys in the next one